So now let's talk about Maximizer. Part of the uh, benefit of my job, one of the coolest things is I get to go talk to some high level top tier mastering engineers and talk to them about ozone. And when I do that, you know, the module that they're constantly saying, yeah, this is my go-to is the maximizer. And this is our, our limiter. Um, and it has sort of these different IRC modes that stands for intelligent release control. And it's kind of this thing we came up with our researchers where it will provide different sort of attack and release times, depending on whether it detects transient material or sustained material, so that you can kind of quickly clip the transients and have a quick release versus uh, sustained material. You don't really want a quick release because it'll kind of sound burned um, and like, you know, like bad limiter sound. So the IRC3 is sort of our most advanced uh, along with IRC4 transient. IRC4 was introduced in like ozone seven or eight and kind of has some additional spectral shaping on top of the limiter algorithm to even improve its transparency more. So they, you know, those high level mastering engineers are usually like IRC3 or IRC4 transient. IRC1 and two still sound good. IRC1 is like a little bit thicker. Two is a little bit more modern sounding. So a lot of people swear by IRC2. IRC LL is fast, so that's a good one to LL is low latency, a good one to use while you're producing and maybe playing MIDI keyboard or, or th things like that. It's got true peak. Uh, that's another thing that will, there's no getting around it, increase the, the CPU load. You set the ceiling, you set the threshold. This is gonna, as I bring this down, this is gonna boost boost the sound. So let's go ahead and, and do that. And so now you can see as signal exceeds the threshold, we are reducing the gain. Uh, you can see it on this scrolling waveform and gain trace here, which is pretty neat. So typically I would be finding a setting right around there. Um, something nice you can do is link the ceiling and threshold and that way you don't get any like loudness boost and you can just kind of hear the distortion and how hard you're pressing it. Go IRC2. So down here, you know, now we can hear too much smashed. something like that. Character is kind of going between a fast thing, which is almost like hard clipping, very slow. You, you'll see this on the gain reduction trace. Very fast versus slow. You pretty The workflow is like you pretty much want to push, you set the threshold to get the desired loudness, then you push the character as far as you can until it's audibly distorted. So I'll just set it back to default of two. Nice thing, pretty much everything you can double click, return it to default. Stereo independence is kind of neat. You can run these as two completely separate limiters in the left and right. You can control, remember how I said it, intelligent release control is kind of treating the transient and sustained material differently. So you can control the stereo independence of the transient and sustained material differently and scale that between zero and hundred percent different. Uh, just set that to like mono. Transient emphasis, gonna emphasize the transients that's been there for a while. And now that I've gone through everything, here's the new thing that's really exciting. Soft clip. It, it deserves a... Yeah, drum roll, new thing. Yeah, it needs an applause because I, this is, it's it's my favorite new feature if I can if I can be so candid. It's just so good. I cannot wait for people to hear this. If if you're looking for a punchy loud master, look no further than just that soft clip button right there. That is well, I guess it's a slider, but trust me. Sorry, I'm gonna I I've hyped it up enough. Bill, take it away. Let him hear it. 
So soft clipping has been sort of notably missing from Ozone for a while. It's a go-to mastering technique. And now that we've added it, a lot of people like you are like, finally, thank goodness. And, you know, we kind of wanted to wait until we could get something really special in terms of the DSP. And, and that's what we've achieved here. Our soft clipper, you know, the math kind of goes over my head, but this is all math, right? And we have these researchers doing this advanced math, looking at like the latest innovations and sometimes making their own latest innovations. And so our soft clipper does that in that it controls the the saturation in such a way like I'm doing it like that. Imagine you've got a sine wave and then you start saturating it and so you get odd order harmonics just spread out over the frequency spectrum. What our soft clipper basically does is like controls those harmonics so that it's way more transparent and smooth and like less harsh. You actually, this percentage is like a wet dry, which is really nice because actually fully soft clipping something is a little bit aggressive, a little bit of an aggressive move. And so by just being able to blend in like 10% or 20% of the soft clip signal, that's a really just good mastering move. So let's let's listen to it. So now we're 100% and uh, another one of those instances where we want to let you push it too far. You're hearing those those transients are just like now and but in a good way. In a, yeah, in in still a pretty smooth way. And it's also louder. So really th think of this as like a high fidelity loudness boost on top of the limiter. So it's actually in the signal chain before the limiter and you're sort of boosting into it. And I would have this right about here. So now let's let me push the limiter a little bit more. And now let's AB. So at only 34%, like you should hear it just come forward. It really you know, does. Like... It really does. And I, I would say um, in my ear over however many internets have to go through it before it gets to me, it might even be a too much for this specific example, but like exactly what you're saying is 34%. You've got so much wiggle room and you're not even on talking about the light or the heavy version down below it, but like it really does change how loud it feels, even though it's really only doing a little bit of work on a very short piece of audio. It's just amazing how much of a difference, just, you know, those little transients, just processing it and clipping those little, it really makes it feel like the whole thing is louder somehow. It's, it's really amazing. It's totally. And, you know, there's a really interesting, mastering debate right now where you know spotify is normalizing other streaming services too normalizing the volume of everything so you can make it louder and louder but they're just going to turn it down so that everything's the same loudness and that's a great experience as a listener and so the debate is well do i keep pushing it louder and louder do i get it as loud as it can go or do i not and instead leave those drum transients like we could see, you could see those drum transients there, right? Am I better off bringing this down? Like look how I bring this down and now I'm just carving those off. Should we be pushing things to be as loud as possible? Should we not? Well, I mean, you know, this has been around for the loudness wars as it's been coined, but I don't know who, but as a DJ, I've got, I, I prefer more dynamics. I mean, there's obviously a healthy balance, pun intended, but like if it's too squished, there's really difficult to get those dynamics back. But I, as someone who's has control over volume on the mixer, the output, like the, the, the main output, the master gain, 
the individual channel gain, the gain on the individual channel, the volume slider, literally the amp and the club. Like, I don't think we need to go louder. Let's keep it more musical. But I'll let you uh, chime in on your opinion as well. But for mine, it's definitely more dynamics, less squished. But there is still a healthy balance where, you know, to be able to bring out those details that are really quiet, if that's what you're looking to do, of course. I So I agree. Like, I put music on Spotify and I'm aiming for, like, negative 12 to negative 10 luffs integrated over the song. And that's, like, a good good level for me. But, uh, you know, that's just my opinion. And we're trying to make Ozone for everybody. And... When I go to talk to these high-level mastering engineers, they are not in the same headspace. And then, you know, I go look at New Music Friday and the the top 40, and those songs are crushed. Yeah, and crushed, it's like yeah. negative 8 dB average, and they still sound good, right? Like there's this whole art to being able to crush it and still have it sound good that people have have figured out. And so I'm not trying to tell high level mastering engineers how to use our product i'm not trying to say like no don't boost the loudness and instead it's like here is a super high fidelity loudness boost to squeeze that extra db extra lufs of loudness out of it if you want to and the choice is yours you know all right we're going to run a poll right now live on the stream right if we want it crushed or we want more dynamics that might be a we loaded. want more dynamics. We so apparently the A and R people, <laughs> you know, the A and Rs are still like, we want it loud. We want it loud. Yeah, I mean, I'm just, you know, it might be a loaded question because I put crush, which I guess kind of has like negative connotation. But let's all be adults about it. Let's. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they, I mean, it's an art, and as you said, you're talking to people who've made a, a living out of it and obviously do it very well. So their opinions obviously matter. And it's a question of how much is it influencing. So if you're listening to the charts and you have more dynamics, it might be have the um, it might just seem like it's quieter, whether or not it is. And as we all know, if you hear something louder, you generally think it's better or sounds more pleasant for whatever reason that is in the psychology of human beings. So it is a dance. It is a dance. So it makes perfect sense that you allow for wiggle room on either side of the coin whether it be crush super loud every you can literally hear everything in your face to the more dynamic stuff so that makes sense but that soft clip feature uh is just phenomenal phenomenal yeah. addition really nice uh so it has three different types of soft clipping a light moderate heavy low mid high i've seen people call it all, all kinds of things um and what that adjusts is how far below the threshold it starts saturating. So we kind of, we wanted to integrate this with the maximizer so that the maximizer's gain staging actually works with the soft clip because the gain stage into the soft clip is like really, really important. Um, so it's linked to the threshold. Light is going to start saturating 3 dB below the threshold moderate is going to start saturating 9 dB below the threshold, and then heavy starts saturating 30 dB below the threshold for sort of a, a little bit of like a blown out sound if you really push it. But some people like that, especially on low values, the, the blown out sound isn't, isn't too bad. You can hear it though on those transients. It's it's a little bit crushed. Good for like hip hop though. Um, and then light is sort of the most gentle. Um, and it's also the least loudness boost. So light will boost the least, heavy will boost the loudness the most at the cost of more or less distortion. I love it. Sweet. I've said we have this piece. pretty interesting, uh, this learn threshold thing. This will take an integrated LUFS measurement as it as it listens and, and set it to whatever we want. So let's go like negative 10. Learn it. You know, bada bing, easy. Uh, and that's like right about where I had it anyways. So yeah, good, uh, good choice, learn threshold. 
<laughs> Should we go ahead and move on to sort of the fifth and final thing, bringing it all together, the master assistant, or are there any other relevant questions on that one? Um, I, you know, a lot of them that have to do with this, I think you're going to touch on when we get into the mastering assistant. So let's just keep it, the train moving. I will tell you that the poll has had 102 votes and we're really heavy on the dynamic side at 87%. This is this is scientific research we're doing here on the Plug and Boutique YouTube channel. Uh, thank you, everybody, for participating. I'm going to leave the poll open a little bit longer, but just know that this poll will be used uh, for decisions in the future for Isotope and Ozone 10. Isn't that right, Bill? That's what you told me? That's, that's it, crowd. You won the loudness war. It's over. Yes, it's done. We've done it. <laughs> we've done everybody. Give me a, a round of applause. We've, we've won. <laughs> we did it. Fantastic. Nice.